So today we are in Oxford and we have just finished installing our first kitchen of 2024. Um, there's a few uh, brand new things that we've got in here that I'm really excited to show you. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking you through the whole process from start to finish. So for this project, uh, the customer, Matt, he got in touch with me before Christmas last year and he sent me some photos of this space. So this patio and this garden is all brand new. He's been having lots of work done here. Um, so he got in touch with me and he had, uh, he had an idea of uh, the kitchen, the style, the layout that he wanted. Um, so he sent me some pictures of things that he'd seen that he really liked the idea of. He sent me some photos of the garden and of the space we had. Um, and together we started, well, I put together a design and we went back and forth until we had it exactly how he wanted it. Um, so the basic layout was a, an L shape as you can see here. Um, the construction he wanted it to be rendered because uh, it's got a very modern and contemporary finish. Um, so we did we did this using um, concrete blocks. So the whole um, kitchen itself the shell is built of concrete blocks and then we've rendered it using a monocouche render. So there are a number of different colours that are available in the monocouche render. Chalk is like the whitest, the brightest one that they do. And then it goes down through greys and creams. I think you can get greens and oranges and things as well. So there's lots of different colours to choose from. Um, so we've got the concrete block um, construction. We've got it rendered. Something, this is a first that we've done actually on this one, which is um, quite interesting. So this patio that you're looking at, it's got a fall from there to there. So all of the water that lands on it hits the water and it comes straight down here. So we're worried slightly about any water puddling along here. So what we've done is we've actually put what are called weep vents all the way along. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see them. When you look at the brickwork over here, this is like a standard traditional building practice. If you look in here, you've got a thing called a weep vent. So any water that gets into the cavity will come down the cavity of the, the wall and then it can then outlet there. It's a way of water getting out. So what we've done is we've actually put weep vents at the bottom here and at the back of the kitchen as well. So any water that comes down here is gonna be able to go through those weep vents, through the kitchen underneath and out the other side, which is a really good way of just getting rid of the water so it's not gonna puddle there. So for the worktops on this kitchen, um, the customer decided to go for a porcelain slab. So we've used these before on many of our kitchens. The worktops are a huge part of the kitchen in terms of the cost. Um, you know, they can run into the thousands as well. So a great way to get a decent worktop and save a bit of money at the same time is to use porcelain slabs, which are ideal for outside. The only downside to it is you have these grout lines that run every time um, every, on the joins between the two tiles. What I did in this, well, there was a couple of things actually. So the customer, when we arrived here, he really wanted the slabs on the worktop to line up with the slabs on the patio itself. So if you look at it now, everything runs in line exactly. And the way that I designed the kitchen as well, when we did all the block work, I designed it in such a way that we wouldn't have to cut any of these slabs. So every edge is a ma machined finish. So you can see all of the, um, the edges along there, they're all machined. Every corner is a machine finish. The only place that we've got a, like a, a disc cutter cut is just to cut out around the barbecue, which is hidden behind there. Um, you can get a good cut with a, with, a, um, with a disc cutter, with a porcelain blade, but you're never gonna get it as great as you can you know, with that machined edge. So the way that I set it out, we've got a slight overhang over here for the bar area. Um, I just made the measurements exactly. So every single tile comes all the way along there. And these ones are the same, no cuts at all, which makes life a lot, lot easier when putting these worktops on. So Matt had his own electrician come in. Once we finished it, um, he had his own electrician come in and um, install these LED um, strip lights on the underside of the overhang of the worktop. So this runs all the way around the perimeter of the kitchen. At night, it lights up. It looks really, really cool. It just gives, it makes it look like a UFO. It looks absolutely incredible. He's also having 
along these sleepers here. They're going to route out a channel with an LED strip going along there that's going to shine up. And he's also got lights in the garden over there. So at night time, the whole thing is going to look incredible. He's also having a pergola going in down there in a couple of weeks time as well, which is going to have um, sofas and a fire pit. So this whole space is going to look absolutely amazing. So this is really, really exciting for us. So if you saw our video either last week or the week before, um, you may have seen that we've just installed a, a display, a brand new display in our showroom, uh, which features the Traeger wood pellet grills. So we've just partnered up with Traegers. We're now being able to offer them to our customers. Um, these are incredible, um, grills. So they are, they are run on wood pellets. So you've got the hopper over here. You open that up, you put your wood pellets in there. That is the fuel for the barbecue. Um, everything is um, run on an app, so you do need power. So you plug it in. The barbecue is fueled by that. You can simply turn it on. Oh, it is on. So that's going to turn on there. The power button is underneath there. You turn it on. You literally, you can set the temperature on it. It's like an oven inside. Um, and then forget about it. It turns on and that will just stay at temperature for as long as it's on. So if you're smoking a brisket, if you're doing some pulled pork ribs, it can go 14, 15, 16 hours um, smoking them. And you get that really lovely um, smoky flavor. There's lots of different flavors as well. Uh, so you get like cherry, uh, they've got a brisket blend, apple, uh, they've got their signature blend, lots of different flavors to choose from. So this is absolutely amazing. Um, this is the, uh, the Timberline. There's another one called the Timberline XL, which is slightly bigger than this. It's exactly the same, just slightly bigger. Um, but you look at this one, look how much space you've got in there. You know, you've got two um, adjustable shelves there. You get loads of ribs, loads and loads of space to cook everything in there. Lots of accessories available as well. So you have cast iron, um, griddles that you can go in there, great for smash burgers and things like that. It comes also with this um, induction hob as well, which we've cut out a hole in there um, to drop that in. That you can use any kind of um, pot and pan, like the magnetic ones. So as long as it's not copper or those types of pans, you can use cast iron skillets, um, any of those, you know, any sort of metal bottomed pan or pot, frying pan you can use on there. So that can be used for making sauces, searing, um, boiling things. Really, really handy to have that. That gets really quick, really, uh, sorry, it gets really hot really, really quickly. Um, Matt has also said he's, he's been um, talking about the shelf. He said this is an absolute game changer, having this shelf um, just for bringing things out and keeping it on there, safe having to move it over there or over here. He absolutely swears by this, says it's really good. Um, that literally pops down if you don't need it. This here is the pop and lock system. So this is a, a bracket that screws onto the grill and you have these little clips that go on there. You can get cup holders, you can get a, um, like a, a, a container that you can keep um, rubs in there, sauces in there, maybe olive oils, things like that. Um, there's also another, um, a roll holder. So if you've got butcher's paper or tea towels, you can keep that on there. Keeps it really handy to, um, to access those. So that is a fantastic grill. As far as I'm aware, this is the first one I've ever seen that's been built into a kitchen. So these grills come on a trolley and they would normally just be wheeled into a kitchen like that with the, you know, the, the powder coated, the aluminium doors underneath there. We have taken all of those away, done away with them and built it in so that everything is inset. You've got the power button and the release valve oh, underneath there. So that's all accessible. And then underneath here, you can open these um, cupboards here. You've got the uh, ash and oil bucket just underneath there. And this underneath there is where, when I pulled that out, that releases the, the chips down there. Um, so Matt has actually got underneath here, he's got baskets in there for holding all of his things. He's actually put in like, um, you can see all the wood chips there, <laughs> I just opened it. Um, this stuff here, um, I don't know what you call this. It's almost like a rubber matting, but it means that he can keep everything off the ground. So how, where I was saying before, any water that comes in can go straight through. This matting stuff just keeps everything off the ground, um, which is a really, really good idea. I've never seen anyone do that before. Uh, coming along to here, you've got uh, just some triple drawers. So these are great just for storing all your bits and pieces in, covers, thermometers, things like that. Here we've got a pull out bin. So the drawer is what we supply and install uh, and then the customer just gets their own bin you can get these at amazon wherever 
great to have somewhere to store all your rubbish. Coming along to here, you've got again, um, double access doors, stainless steel. Again, plenty of storage in there, lots and lots of storage. We've also got down there, that end as well, is the gas for the Gosney. Um, so this Gosney, again, this is another first for us. This is the S1. So this is brand new. It only came out, I think at the end of last year. So this is almost identical to the dome, which you may have heard of. You've seen them in our other videos. Um, but this is gas only, so it's not wood fired. Um, and it's missing the under section that has like storage for wood and things like that. So this is about, I think it's about 400 pounds cheaper than the dome, but still has all the benefits and all the same technology of it. It's really, really good. If you look around the back here, actually, if you want to follow me around, you can see here that we've actually put like a, a vent in there and that gives somewhere for the hose to go through. We've put it on the side there as opposed to the top, just to stop any water getting in there. Um, you can put a hole in the top there. If you had a shelter over it or something like that, you could do that. But by putting it in here, it stops any water, rain or anything getting in there. You can see also at the bottom there, we've got a vent down there. So if there's any leaks from the gas tank or anything like that, that's got somewhere to go and get out. So here we've got the beefy to stainless steel double fridge. So tons and tons of space in there for keeping your food cold, your drinks cold. Um, they've actually put these things in there, which I haven't seen before. I love what they've done with it. They've got done, they've put so many little things for their kitchen that really add something to it and bring some, some extra things to it. They've got these little, they're just like bottle holders. You don't need them, but it just works really well. So you've now got somewhere to lay all your bottles down like that, which I think is really, really cool. Um, you've got the whole bar area here with the overhang. So you've got four seats over here. So comfortably seat four people over here. It's just a great um, social space. I think Matt was saying he had his um, daughter's friends over the other day. They're all making pizzas and things like that. So it's just a great space to enjoy with the friends and family. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching this video as much as we've enjoyed building this kitchen and showing you about it. If you want to see another video like this, I'll leave a link up there, just head over there. We try and post videos like this at least once a week, showing the kitchens that we build and giving you some ideas and an idea of the process of how to build these things from start to finish. Um, if you want to see more things or more regular updates of what we're doing, we have Instagram, we have Facebook. Um, we try and post on there a few times a week with stories and all that sort of thing. Uh, if you've got any questions on anything, just leave a comment below or get in touch. We'll leave all of the details in the link. But um, thanks very much for watching this video. and We'll see you on the next one.